everyone, and welcome back to Wonder of Faith. As always, I'm Anthony Bush, and as you can see, I am back home for a bit, uh, on break from university during the summer here, so that's why I'm back in my room for now. Uh, but today we're going to continue, as we usually do, uh, we're moving into Constitution 3, which is celebrating virtue. That's going to be the whole topic for uh, this video, and I'm very much looking forward to it. It's one of my favorite things to talk about. Uh, pursuing the good, understanding the good, and applying the good to our lives. That's really key to living happily. And so we're going to uh, go through that subject and uh, explore it some and how it relates to us throughout the video. Uh, so we start uh, with the subtitle, To show the power of celebrating what is good and holy in spite of a world focused on darkness and sin. Behold, as we explored wonder in the faith that the Church provides, we find many things that inspire awe and celebration. We find that the power of good always prevails over evil, and darkness in the end. Therefore, we must spend more of our time celebrating good and light in the journey instead of allowing the darkness of this world to occupy our thoughts and destroy our gift of dream and wonder. So it starts out with what we as individuals focus on, because you'll see a lot of good and bad in the world. We can focus on the bad, we can let it consume us, we can let it uh, depress us, or we can, through hope, see the good that is possible. We can hope for what is better and bring it about through our own actions. So depending on what we tend to focus on, we can at the very beginning orient ourselves toward accepting good, celebrating it, uh, lifting it up when we can instead of allowing the bad to um, permeate us and uh, bring us to a fallen state, whether that's by making us do bad things, by making us feel despair about the amount of evil in the world. These things uh, can cause us to become stagnant and forget our own capacity for the good and to bring about good. The virtues of purity and what is good can be celebrated and affirmed among souls and in the person alone. We do this by remembering the gifts God has given to us and how we have impacted the world for the better. If we remember the happiness and grace that has been allowed us, we can continue in vigor and live as we ought to. On the other hand, the world continues to affirm the life of sin and self-destruction. We must stand apart and reinforce those values that make us good no matter the opposition that faces us from the world. So, on default, the world's counsel to us, that is, the societal trends and how we are to fit in, how we are to be normal, will usually point us toward detriment. Detriment of self, detriment of other, detriment of community, because the ori the orientation of society is not toward the good, but toward mediocrity and acceptability. And so if we live our lives to be accepted, if we live our lives to be just average enough to be acceptable, then we harm ourselves, we turn away from our capacity for the good, for the better, for that which is more. Because to pursue the good, to live out the good, to, see, to search for it, to know it, to speak it, does not make one popular, does not make one acceptable to the whole, but instead it causes the one to be rejected because by acting and being what is good, you challenge the status quo. You are making a statement about what virtue is, and therefore by making that statement, you make others think about their own lives and their own actions. And many don't like to do that. They want to be content with doing what they want to do, what is pleasing to them, rather than what is actual and what is good. So by being that, by kind of forcing others to focus on their own lives and actions, you make them uncomfortable. You make them feel uncomfortable. Uh, uncertain about their lives. And that's not usually a happy feeling. So you will be rejected, you will be derided, and you will be uh, kind of pushed metaphorically into the corner, so to speak. And that may make you alone in the culture, but that is different from being alone 
in actuality. Because if you have genuine relationships, genuine friendships that transcend that mediocre shallowness, then you'll be set to go. You don't need the world to tell you you're okay or that you're acceptable because you have those who actually care about you to do that. And not just say it, but to mean it and to help you understand who you are, what you are to be, what you are to overcome. Through genuineness. So that's the dichotomy. A genuine good, a genuine being compared to a shallow, false understanding, a false being. Um, just playing a role to fit in. A spirit that is festive and proud of those times in which virtue proves strongest shall surely inspire the faith in the hearts of others in a positive and reinforcing way. So it's not only about being good, it's about how do we see the good? Do we celebrate it when we see it in other people? Do we value it? Do we see it as a priceless thing? Because if we see the good as valuable and see the true essence of what it is, then we can more easily promote it to be it. Because it's not just enough to follow rules. It's not about the rules. It's about seeking the actual living and and constant good in our lives that exists separate from us. Now this is a platonic idea, this is an objectivist idea that the good that is uh, what is of God exists separate from our perception. I do not create the good. No one on this earth creates what is good. They only are able to seek out what is actually good and then live it accordingly. And then they can continue to live accordingly. They become stable stern and unchanging because the good does not change and therefore they don't change either. They're not stuck fluidly moving from thing to thing without any identity or, or, or stern structure, but the good that does not change keeps them anchored, keeps them attached to what is actual and what is to be pursued and therefore there is not that fluctuation or change in values ever so often with society. Execution. Let there be a focus on the power of good in every person that enables the celebration. It is important that the good be found within others, as to inspire hope and optimism in God's plan for all, even if they are not currently following his plan. By seeing this good, we can more easily see the good that is within us. The seeking of virtue must become habit, and eventually be essential key to the person we are. To seek virtue is not necessarily easy, nor is it a quick endeavor. It takes time. It takes a lifetime to become virtuous. And what do we mean by becoming virtuous? I tend to go by the Aristotelian definition, which means to seek eudaimonia, which is happiness in flourishing as the human person, in fulfilling who I am to be by being fully Anthony Bush, nothing less. To do this, I have to be, uh, be genuine in my actions. I have to be a real, a real person. And to be real means to be good, because that is what our potential allows us to be, to be good. That is the ultimate end of our life. Not to be uh, rich, not to be pleasure-seeking, or to be content with our biological needs, but to be good, to challenge ourselves, to overcome adversity, and to become that who God has made us to be. The church thrives on the shared communion of all her adherents, and thus from the God-given virtues that empower her and allow her to exist in the hearts of man. Being united in the ability to find good can aid in the expulsion of those sins that bind us. This, of course, is not to say that we should completely overlook our faults and continue in error by only being naive. We are called to find the fixable imperfections as well since we do have the obligation to admonish the sinner and instruct the ignorant. So when we as a collection, as a church, seek the good for ourselves, for our neighbor, for our friends, for our family, for our loved ones, we together become more powerful. We as a community, as a whole, seek the good, seek God, and by our collective united action, we accomplish more. We hold one another up. And so to go at it alone is to have oneself be open to the failures of the imperfect self, of my sin, of my bias, of my irrationality. But if we take others with us and we seek good in commune with our friends and family, 
we feel stronger in our endeavor because we have those who are there to keep us accountable to God, to our faith, to the church, and to the good. And so through collective effort, we can accomplish more than we ever could by ourselves. But this doesn't mean we lose sight of ourselves in the pursuit, right? Because it's not just about the whole, but it is about each of us individually, soul to soul, being who we in ourselves were made to be. But when we say look for good, we also mean we have to seek and find our faults, our weakness. Because how can we better ourselves if we don't know what we need to better ourselves in? So to seek the good is to find it, to know it, to focus on it. But that does not mean that we simply forget about our faults and those areas where we struggle. Because we have to confront ourselves, confront our um, imperfections, our limitations, so that we can become better in those areas and become better overall. Onward. Let it be known that from these lessons and revelations, this Constitution does decree, number one, the recognition of virtue in self and others is to always take precedent over the finding of trivial faults. So when we look to ourselves and to others, it isn't just about the fault. It isn't just about what we do wrong, but we look to the good. What are we virtually capable of doing, and how in that can we emulate that action or that gift for our own self or for those around us. We have to be an example for others and allow them to be examples for us or else we get nowhere. Number two, time is to be set apart for the celebration of what is good and just. Time should be taken not only to pursue the good, but to come and know it, to think about it, to celebrate it, to feel the good, to understand the essence of what is good because good action, good thought, they all share in the goodness, right? So they are unified, and there's this essence to it that is familiar. That's why the good is able to be known. We can discern the good because we can be in tune to God in the divine will, and the divine truth, and know what is actually of God, what actions, what ideas, um, what understandings. And then we, after knowing it and rationally understanding it, we pursue it fully. Number three, in no way is this celebration to hinder in the mission to remove and change dark acts by self or others. So to know and learn the good and to celebrate it does not mean that we are to stop pursuing it. We can't get so hung up on seeing it and being infatuated with it that we don't pursue it and get to know it fully and bring ourselves into it, pursuing right action, right thought, right Deed. So it's a balance between knowing it, studying it, and then pursuing it. Both have to be present or else the system, the process, is not complete. But you be, must be able to know what you are to pursue and then pursue what you know. And number four, encourage others to take part in the daily celebration of good in order to empower the world to continue for the sake of the Lord. I'd say the world in itself does not really think too much about the good. It doesn't come up because the good is just seen as a subjective thing that no one can understand, which is a very easy position to hold. If I wanted to not be privy to any rule or any objective standard, I would just say it doesn't exist. That's the easy way of getting out of being responsible. But if we look to understand what it means to be human, to be virtuous, I think we'll find that at the very core of that question are things that are undeniable. There are certain acts, certain understandings that are objectively good because they're of God. It's not so much that because this one person doesn't think that it's good, then it must not be good. That's not a very rational way of thinking. But it could be the case that they are out of line with what is good. We have to be able to find it, seek it, know it, and not just give up on the question. Because to give up on the question is to subject the self to running around, uh, trying to fulfill the passions, or do what one thinks is good, or what one wants to do. So you become a slave to your will, to your passions, and what you want, rather than what is actually good, what is actually beneficial for you, that is different from what you want. Number five. 
be an example as to inspire especially those individuals looked down upon and derided. So they'll always be vulnerable among us, those who are not seen, those who are good but are not appreciated. And so it is our job to see the good in them, to be good for them. And then once we do that, once we acknowledge it, we can appreciate them. Too many people are, un are not appreciated. Too many people are looked down upon. And it's a shame. It's a sin because everyone deserves appreciation, understanding, and support. Finally, the Bible verse. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, seeing that his divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness, through the true knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 2 and 3. Finally, I want to share something about myself uh, that's relatable. I, as a child, uh, especially, like scepters and rods and, and kind of symbols of power. I thought they were cool. I always had one for myself. And there's just something about it that uh, was special. And so I wanted to relate that to what we're talking about now. Here is one of my staffs. It's, I like it. It's a pretty design. It's a stick and it has a design. But what does the stick represent? To hold the stick is to hold something solid is to have something that is, does not bend, something that does not give way, and it supports, so to hold the stick, supports weight, and it allows us to walk more easily. So the stick is beautiful. It's straight, it's true, it's unyielding, as I said. It has a design, but to bend it, when I try to bend it, it does not waver. It does not uh, collapse under the stress of my my arms. So too must virtue be to have your own rod to represent your own dedication to being true to being of the narrow path. This doesn't mean to be hard-headed or rude but it means to know the good and then refuse to let it go. Refuse to sell it away for anything less than. And only be willing to serve God and who he made us to be. There'll be so many people trying to deny or trying to convince you that the good you have is worthless in comparison to what the world can give, right? But you have to remember the stick. You have to remember that its beauty, its strength lies with you. Your ability to remain true, to be unbroken. There are too many sticks that have, been, that have been broken throughout the ages. Too many people have given up who they are for the whole, for the crowd. But I think we know better than that. I think we truly uh, can understand that to give it all up is to sacrifice happiness. And so if we're truly dedicated to truth, to happiness, to goodness, to virtue, to living our fullest... Let us not turn away from the ethical question. Let's celebrate the good. Let's know the good and let's do the good and help others to do the same. Lest we fail in our mission and our responsibility to do so. As always, I'm Anthony Bush. Uh, this has been another episode uh, on the orders from Wonder of Faith. Uh, may you find final victory in Christ. May God be with you. I will see you next time.